Humans are so dense. Part 2. A story by user Gaza1121. Gert fell silent, remembering the fear he had felt watching the humans fall through the ship. Private? And then what happened? His anger at his subordinate tempered somewhat after hearing the true story of the incident. Misguided as it was, he only tried to help the humans. Nothing, sir. Nothing? Asked Captain Hung. A giant hole gets torn the transport and nothing happened? Gert swallowed. There was nothing we could do, sir. The Enviro suits were in the cargo hold, and the ones inside the ship were already in decontamination. The rest of the crew couldn't enter the hold because of the breach. Also, when the humans fell, they broke the systems to operate the external doors. I wasn't even able to exit to help. The external doors were non-functional? What about the backups? It was a substantial hole, sir. It broke the backups also. After the incident, the best we could do was inform both command ships and await rescue, Gert said sheepishly. As Captain Hung was considering new protocols regarding envirosuit storage and extra airlocks to prevent this happening again, his door buzzed. Pressing the button for the intercom, he barked. This had better be important. I gave instructions not to be disturbed while I debriefed Private Gert. Forgive me, Captain, said the voice on the other end. But there are two humans approaching in a shuttle. They wish to speak regarding the incident on the planet, and are requesting permission to come aboard. What? Permission granted. Show them to my office immediately. Yes, Captain, came the reply. Hung was concerned. Given what Gert said about delays, the humans should have taken longer to get their crew aboard and treated. Had they been dead when the humans arrived? His private said they appeared well when last he saw them. As if the private heard him thinking of him, Gert suddenly stood up. Should I leave, sir? The captain sighed. No, you must stay. There was no malice in your actions, though misguided. You were only trying to help. That being said, your actions may have led to the injury or death of humans, and that cannot be ignored. You will stay, and when the humans arrive, you will take any punishment they dictate. Sir, please, I... The door buzzed again. This time the tone signaled the being was on the other side, rather than just using the intercom system. Straightening himself, he called for them to enter. As the two humans entered, he thought of Gert. It was an accident, surely. But if the humans wished it, the private would be sacrificed to keep the peace. Captain Hoon. The first human began with a small smile, seemingly making an effort to attempt the correct Antkin pronunciation of his name. Thank you for taking the time to meet with us, to discuss the accident on the surface. Of course, replied the captain, noting in particular the word accident the human had used. The humans had considered this an accident? Hope stirred that this could end without bloodshed as he gestured to some Antkin chairs opposite his desk. Gert had moved against the wall in preparation for the human's entry. The humans inclined their heads in thanks as they took a seat. Though he hid it, it still unnerved him how they sat, first bending at the waist, then knees. Their bipedal nature had deeply confused the Antkin at first. Being quadrupeds themselves, they regarded this method of locomotion as highly unstable. The first time they had seen human sports, however, they understood how much this bipedal nature was an advantage. The speed and agility they possessed, it was amazing. Running at incredible speeds, the humans could rapidly change directions again and again with almost no loss of speed. The humans were simply surprised by his kind's appearance. Thinking back to the first contact of their species, the leaders of both people made the decision to record the first face-to-face -face interaction, both to show others of their kind in the future, and to capture the first reaction. As they approached, one human blurted out without thinking. It's the bloody Rachnos. His tone shocked the Antkin, but before any being on the other side could do more than widen their eyes, another human replied. Don't be daft, Carter. The Rachnos were arachnids. These people are clearly insectoids. Thus we discovered the imaginary human creature, the centaur, and our species' apparent similarity to it, though the color was different and four legs were thinner. Our heads were also similar to an insect species on their planet, hence our name in the human language. Ant Kin, shortened to a single word later on. As the humans settled into the chairs, the chairs sagged and creaked worryingly. Glancing at each other, they touched the device on their belts, altering their weight. The gravity harnesses of the humans. The Antkin were not really sure where this technology came from. They certainly didn't have it when they met. His people had gravity manipulation technology, of course, 
It was one of the first technologies they shared with the humans. But Antkin Gravtech was enormous compared to the humans, used to assist in takeoff and landing of their ships. The generators were the size of rooms. Maybe that's why the humans wanted to see it. An antique of laughable size compared to the humans' tiny grab tech. There were voices among his people who wanted to ask the humans where it came from and how it worked, but more voices still that warned against it. The Antkin were supposed to be the more advanced race, and it wouldn't do to show weakness. Once settled, the lead human turned to Captain Hu. My name is Commander Jameson, Captain. My companion is Dr. Hannah Smith. Nice to meet you, Captain, said Hannah with a smile. Likewise. This is it, thought the captain. Gesturing to Gert, he said. This is Private Gert. He is the one responsible for what happened. As the humans turned to Gert, he rose, somber, as if ready for his own execution. I am terribly sorry, Commander, Gert began. I should never have risked the safety of your people. I can only beg for your forgiveness and offer myself to whatever punishment you deem appropriate. Captain Hung was proud. Gert was obviously terrified. Yet he still faced the humans. He was willing to lay his fate at the humans' feet willingly. If the humans killed him in vengeance, he would honor the private. It was punishment of his own making, surely. But he faced it with honor and bravery. The humans blinked. Punishment? The humans repeated. What do you mean, punishment? That was clearly an accident. Nobody was really hurt in any serious way. We aren't here for any punishment. The captain was shocked. Then why did you come aboard? And why bring a doctor if not to supervise any punishment given? It was the commander's turn to be shocked. We came to apologize, Captain. According to our people's reports, we did a considerate amount of damage to your ship as they fell. We came to apologize and ask if we can help repair it. Yes, Captain, continued Hannah in agreement. And I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a scientist. I was sent to request if you had any idea what happened with the gravity harnesses and the interference that seemingly reversed its effects. Also to ask if we may study this interference your private mentioned. I don't understand, Doctor, said Hung. How would we know about your technology? Well, it started as yours. Pardon? Our gravity technology, explained the woman. It all came from your people. The captain blinked. Wait, what? If you're new here, welcome aboard. Check out the description for the story, and join the Discord if you'd like. Consider supporting the channel and the author as well. It's a dangerous world out there, but remember to be brave and look up to seek the stars.